Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 21 of my Linear Algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about the four fundamental subspaces, being the null space, the column space, the row space, and the left null space. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so we talked about the null space and the column space previously, but I think it is very important to come in and make sure you 100% understand both before we move on. So the null space is just the vector x, where when we multiply it times a matrix A, we get a result of zero. And I would just want to work through an example here. So let's say we have a matrix and it is 2, 1, negative 4, and negative 2. Well, what we want to find are the values of x1 or, and x2 that is going to give us a result of 0. So what we want to do here is we want to solve for x1 and x2. So let's just come in and do so. So I'm going to go and get my matrix and I am going to multiply row 1 times 1 half and put this back inside of R1 and that's going to leave us with 1, 1 half, and let's put zeros inside of here as well. So negative 4, negative 2, and 0. All right, and then we're going to take 4, R1, plus R2, which is going to leave us with 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 0. And if we convert this into an equivalent system, this is going to give us x1 plus 1 half x squared, which is equal to 0. Which means, of course, that x1 is going to be equal to negative 1 half x2. And x2 is equal to x2. Now, if we go and collect these terms into vectors, we're left with x1, x2 is equal to negative 1 and a half x squared, or x2, and x2. And this leaves us with the null space of A being equal to the vector negative 1 half and 1. And we can verify that this is indeed true. Let's go and get our original matrix. And there we are. Times our vector. Negative 1 and a half and 1. And if we multiply this through, we find out that yes, indeed, we get that zero vector that we were looking for. All right. So there you go. That is how we go and find our null space. Thought it was important to review because it's going to be very important coming up. Also wanted to review the column space, which is basically all linear combinations of columns of A, where A is a matrix. So let's say that we have our matrix A, 4, 5, 1, 2, negative 2, 6, 2, negative 1, 1, 4, 3, 1. Well, our column space is going to be equal to the span of these columns. So 4, negative 2, and 1, and 5, 6, and 4, and finally 1, 2, and 3. So basically the column space is just the span of the first three columns because if we put this into row echelon form, this matrix A is going to end up being equal to 1, 0, oh, 0. Oh. I'm not going to show you how to do that because I've shown you how to con convert into row echelon form I'd probably 15 times, so I'm going to save you from that. So this matrix is this right here in row echelon form. And we know that the null space of A is going to be equivalent to the null space of A in row echelon form. Let's just work out the null space just to do it. So this means that x1 plus 35 over 66 x4 is going to be equal to 0. x2 minus 5, 6, 6, 
x4 is going to be equal to 0 and x3 plus 17 over 6, 6, x4 is equal to 0 and x4 is equal to itself. So if we go and convert this, we find that x1 is equal to negative 35 over 66 x4. x2 is equal to 5 over 66 x4. x3 is equal to negative 17 66 x4 and x4 is equal to x4. And this means that the null space of this matrix is going to be negative 35 over 66, 5 over 66, negative 17 over 66, and 1. And if you multiply that times the matrix, you will indeed find that that is the null space for that matrix. And since the columns here all contain leading ones, those are our pivot columns, and that indeed proves that the column space for this matrix is what you see up here in the upper right hand corner. Okay, and that brings us to the third subspace which is called the row space and basically what it is is the column space of the transpose. Once again it's going to be all linear combinations of three columns and the symbol for it is going to be C transpose of A like that. So let's go and get our matrix A and the transpose of this would be 4, 5, 1, 2, negative 2, 6, 2, negative 1, 1, 4, 3, 1, as we covered in the last video. And to get this into row echelon form, if you did so, I would be happy to work this out, but I've had some people say, please stop showing us how to convert things into row echelon form, so that's why I'm not showing you. Basically, this is the result you would get if you converted that into row echelon form. And you can see here that all three columns have a pivot. So this is x1, this is x2, and this is x3. So what that tells us is that our row space is going to be equal to the span of the three columns, which is just 4, 5, 1, 2, negative 2, 6, 2, 1, and 1, 4, 3, 1. Okay, so there you go. That is how you find the row space. And that brings us to our final subspace, which is called the left null space. Well, let me explain exactly why we call it that. Basically, what it's going to be is, again, matrix A. You want to get the transpose of it. Then you're going to have some vector that is going to give you the null vector. All right? So it's just basically the vector times a transpose that equals the null vector. That's it. And it's called the left null space. Why is it called the left null space? Well, let's say we have what you see right here. Well, we could take the transpose of both sides. And if we did so, we have a transpose, which is transposed. We'd also have to do that to the x vector and the null vector transpose. Well, that's going to leave us... If we take the transpose of a transpose, well, that's just a x transpose, which is equal to the transpose of the null vector. And if we simplify, we can see that the vector x represents all vectors where the matrix A times those vectors is equal to our null space. And that's the reason why we have left null space. All right, so let's go work through an example again. So if we have A, keep this a little bit simple this time. All right, so a transpose is going to be equal to 2, negative 4, 1, and negative 2. And I'm going to put this into row echelon form for you, because why not? So let's go get rid of that part there, and O, and O, and if we take R1 times 1 half, it's going to leave us with 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2, O, O, and then if we take negative 1, R1, put it inside of R2, 
That's going to leave us with 1, negative 2. Those are going to be zeroed out. These, of course, stay the same. If we then convert this matrix into an equivalent system, we get x1 minus 2, x2 is equal to 0. And we, if we go and also add in the equation for our free variable, that's going to give us x2 is equal to x2. And if we solve for both of these variables, we find that x1 is equal to 2, x2 and x2 is equal to x2. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the left null space, which looks like this, is going to be equal to 2 and 1. Alright, so there you go. Now you understand and have seen examples of how to calculate the four fundamental subspaces. More on them are coming up in future videos and like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.